Good day, everybody. Zach Kords here with Revzilla, and welcome to another episode of Daily Rider. Our guest today is Spurgeon's very own 2021 KTM 890 Adventure R Rally. That is a 900cc parallel twin or thereabouts, nearly 11 inches of suspension travel, all for an MSRP around $20,000. Now, this Rally Spec 890 is tall and mean and meant to dominate in the dirt, but it's based on a much more standard adventure touring motorcycle meant to be easy to use from day to day. So on the ride to work today, we will talk about the evolution and compromises of the 890 Rally and uh, whether or not you need to be Spurgeon Dunbar to truly enjoy it. You ready? Let's ride to work, everybody. <laughs> Yo, righty, everybody. Before we get started here, a friendly reminder. This episode of Daily Rider is brought to you by our friends at Rever. Rever is a mobile app that allows you to plan and track your rides and then share photos and ride information with your friends and an online community. You can download it for free at your app store of choice or to learn more, go to Rever. Co. Alrighty, the Spurgeon Dunbar 890 Rally, affectionately known as hashtag Sally the Rally. It's quite a machine, everybody. <laughs> I guess we'll start with the basics, right? That's what we usually do here, and that's what's most important. So underneath this um, lube of a gas tank, we'll talk about in a second, is an 889cc parallel twin. I sometimes talk about firing order, like 270 cranks where the pistons sort of go up and down like this, or 180 crank where they go up opposite each other. The KTM parallel twin is actually kind of interesting. It's actually, instead of a 90 degree crank pin offset, it's like a 75 degree crank pin offset. And that makes for a 435 degree firing order, sort of, <laughs> which is a little strange. The characteristic is very similar to a 270 parallel twin, but even though it sounds kind of similar to an MT-07 or an Africa twin or bikes like that, it's actually technically a slightly different engine design, which is kind of interesting. The other big notable thing here, I think, is uh, the gas tank. It's sort of a horseshoe-shaped gas tank, right? So it comes down on either side here. And these lobes down here carry most of the fuel, which is kind of neat because all the weight ends up down low when the tank is full, which is pretty smart. There are a couple drawbacks to do with the fuel gauge, which hopefully I'll remember to talk about later. But in general, nifty design, a little strange looking, but pretty cool and pretty smart. A couple of other nifty rally options, specifically this WP cone valve suspension is sort of the bee's knees in, uh, in the adventure role, at least from KTM. And like I said, I think it's 10.6 inches of travel front and rear, I believe. And that is not nothing. <laughs> Makes for a pretty tall motorcycle, as we'll talk about. Also, Acra pipe, which I believe is standard for the 890 Rally and kind of a nice feature. And I think this power part seat is an option that comes with the Rally, if memory serves. But we will talk more about how the seat feels later on, of course. Some of this stuff is uh, our Spurgeon Dunbar add-ons. Uh, Black Dog uh, skid plate, which is a big burly skid plate there. Um, these uh, hand guards, the double take mirrors, are um, Spurgeon Dunbar add-ons. I think the pegs are wider than standard, or maybe that's a rally thing. You know what, he sent me a document. Let me, let's just pull it up here real quick. Hang on, everybody. Okay, okay, so here you have all the rally stuff that he sent over to me. And if you pause or zoom in, you can see some of this stuff. Also, to be fair, Spurgeon Dunbar wrote a very comprehensive article about building a 790 rally, which is largely the same bike component-wise anyway. And uh, the link to that article is in the description of this video if you'd like all the nitty-gritty details on how everything works. But uh, more to the point for this ride, Spurgeon has also has lower handlebar, handguards, mirrors, skid plate, we talked about that, front sprocket cover, GPS mount, rear rack, whatever, quick removal luggage rack and then the uh, the tires there. This is a Scorpion front tire from Pirelli and a TKC80 in the back, which were brand spanking new when he gave it to me, and now they're a little bit chewed up because <laughs> they raged a little bit off-road and did some testing. You know, I mean, this is my job, everybody, right? Okay, enough talking. Let's ride the Spurgeon Dunbar of motorcycles to work, shall we, everybody? Yeah, they have a little TFT dash there, looking good, and uh, we'll fire up this acro pipe, or we'll fire up this engine and listen to the pipe. Yeah, nice and bassy. Um, good sound from the pipe. And not too loud, which I appreciate. I might mention that again later when we're riding, but uh, I appreciate that it's not as loud as my personal KTM, <laughs> which is kind of obnoxious, if we're being honest. All right, everybody. Climb aboard this beastie. 
and we will ride to work Spurgeon Dunbar style. All right, let's knock some specs out of the way here, shall we? What do we need to still talk about still? Uh, we talked about, oh, MSRP, I think technically is $19,999 in 2021. So I rounded up to 20 grand, hope that's okay. For a little bit of perspective, I believe a standard KTM 890 Adventure R was 14.2 maybe. So $6,000 approximately, I think 5,800 bucks in uh, difference in MSRP which um, is a lot, certainly. Spurgeon was quick to point out that, um, that the suspension upgrades alone on this bike are um, around $8,000, I think is what he said anyway. <laughs> um, the seat height I'd like to talk about is 37 inches approximately. So you can see I can sort of flat foot, but I'm, it's, uh, it's a little bit undignified if I'm honest. I'm uh, often tippy toeing around. <laughs> at six foot two and um, it is an extremely tall motorcycle. I don't actually remember riding any motorcycle that felt taller aside from uh, Kyle Wyman's Harley Davidson factory, King of the Baggers Racer a video also available on the Red Ville YouTube channel. It is extremely tall and very uncompromising, obviously. Other specs we got to talk about 105 claimed horsepower. I believe though I saw a couple of dynos online that suggested 85 to 90 at the rear wheel. Not really notable, just a good amount of horsepower. 100 horsepower bike is just about right usually in my opinion. And then uh, with the 5.3 gallon tank full, it weighed in on the daily rider scales at 476 pounds. So not small, not light, but small enough and light enough, or light enough I should say, that it certainly separates itself from the real behemoths of the class. Specs as usual listed in the description of the video if you'd like more information. When it comes to ergonomics and sort of general comfort on the bike, it's quite comfortable. A typical ADV, a nice open riding position. Spurgeon's got this lower handlebar on here, but even still, it's quite upright and reasonable and just sort of easy. And what with a 37 inch seat height or something thereabouts, there's plenty of leg room in my opinion. Uh, the foot pegs are still pretty high because there's lots of ground clearance on this bike. Just in general, Typical adventure bike, nice, comfortable place to sit. And as we'll talk about in a minute here, the seat is uh, surprisingly good. All right, we're moving slow down the highway, but we can still talk about highway manners to a certain extent. And one thing that this bike does not do that many adventure touring bikes do is have a lot of wind protection. <laughs> the 890 Rally has a slightly smaller windscreen than stock, I believe, you know, because it's supposed to be all rugged and mean. Actually, I find it works pretty well for me because it takes all the wind off my chest basically and leaves my helmet in the wind. And if it was slightly shorter, it wouldn't dump all of the turbulent air right below my helmet. It's a little bit loud for me as it stands, but it's almost just right for sort of a um, two thirds comprehensive wind protection. I think it's actually pretty comfortable on the highway. Oop, I just realized my chin vent was open. It's probably starting to whistle there. Sorry, everybody. I got it sealed off now. Should be nice and quiet for you. Yeah, aside from wind protection, uh, just kind of the usual thing I always say about adventure bikes on the highway, it's just like a really nice place to be. This bike has a fairly flat seat, so you can sort of scoot back or scoot forward as you please, but it's upright, it's open, it's comfortable, it's relaxed, it's neutral. It's all of the right words for comfort cruising down the road. And yeah, back to that seat, I got a couple questions on Instagram about like, you know, how terrible is that seat? It must be awful. Because I think people assume, understandably, that if a bike is made for the dirt and made to be purposeful and made to be mean and aggressive and all of those things, that the seat would be bad. Uh, but it's not, actually. I think it's, it's a little stiff, but it's a nice shape. And I just have found it to be very comfortable in all of the highway riding that I've done. So good on KTM for that. Now they're going highway speeds. I can say the engine feels pretty good at this pace. In general, the engine gearing and everything is like pretty much right on the money for what I would do. It's meant to be a super aggressive and technical bike to ride and, and difficult off-road terrain. And sometimes I found gearing to be a little too tall for that. And sometimes on the highway, I wish it was geared a little taller. So maybe if I were king of KTM, Stefan, if you're listening, 
I would make the gear ratio slightly wider spaced because I think that would suit adventure riding a little bit better. But in general, I'm really reaching for something there. It's quite good and it only really gets buzzy if you try to go 80 or above, I'd say, something like that. And so being that I have praised the general comfort of the 890 Adventure R Rally on the highway, the open road, you might be wondering what kind of fuel range you'll get. And my number was mixed off-road and on-road and still over 40, I think it was 41 point something, between 41 and 42. And I've seen plenty of numbers online that suggest 45 or a little bit better than that. Miles per gallon is plenty achievable with this bike. That being the case, 5.3 gallons of gas should get you almost 250 miles if you're cautious, I think. But anyway, over 200. For an adventure bike, in my mind, 200 miles is the minimum. You gotta be able to do that to call yourself a real adventurer, I think. Oh, we caught this here red light. So we can do a little acceleration test on Spurgeon Dunbar's fresh knobby tires. <laughs> okay, so uh, just as an example, both feet on the ground, this is where I'm at. I'm at like tippy toe on both sides. If I scoot my butt over, I can get flat footed with one foot, but boy, is it a tall bike. All right, here we go. <laughs> All right, two more things I want to talk about on the highway segment here. One is cruise control, which happens via this uh, little doohickey over here. Standard on the rally, I believe. Might be standard by now on the, the regular bike, I'm not sure. But I like the cruise a lot. I like that you can see the set speed on the dash when you set it. Smart. Uh, I don't like when it just sort of says, what speed you set at? I don't know, you guess. Other thing is mirrors. These are not standard mirrors, I wouldn't say. <laughs> uh, but they're pretty cool and they're good. I have long been a fan of double take mirrors. I think they're nifty in so much as when you are adventuring, you know, the tree branches don't knock your mirrors off because you can fold them in. But in general, I've always been kind of surprised that considering they're built for that sort of um, use case, that they're pretty smooth. And I suppose the 890 platform deserves a little bit of credit there too for them not being too buzzy. All right, stop sign challenge on the 37 inch seat height Spurgeon Dunbar special. Ooh, yeah, that's one footless stop in the books. We dodged one bullet. <laughs> credit to the bike, I suppose, for being pretty well balanced at low speed. It certainly gives up some round town manners being really tall. The knobby tires don't necessarily help, but it is, of course, designed to be manageable and have plenty of poise at low speed. So uh, it can't be that surprising that it's good at doing the footless stops. A little bobble from the quick shifter. Spurgeon Dunbar had the quick shifter turned off when I got this bike off the pallet. Why, why Spurgeon Dunbar? Did you have the quick shifter turned off? I'm not sure. He's just not a big fan of quick shifters. I, I, I've come to, to know. Um, but I like it. I think KTM quick shifter is quite good. A um, little bit balky sometimes at low speed, low RPM. Whoa! But, uh, but in general, pretty good and um, nice feature in general, in my opinion. If I have one complaint about round town manners for uh, the KTM, ah, oh, son of a, screwed that one up. It's the clutch engagement zone. It, uh, it just feels a little narrow. That's my first impression. I have stalled the bike a few times. Uh, in general, I've gotten used to it and I don't think it's like a huge uh, demerit for the bike at all. Uh, I just think it's something that I noticed, which is like the whole point of the show. So hopefully, <laughs> hopefully that's worth something to you. Rom life. Oop. Green light already. So ultimately, how is the 890 Adventure R rally around town? Uh, fine, I guess, as long as you're over six feet tall or you're a confident rider or whatever. Despite its good manners and good tuning and good build quality and good feel and and it's a good bike but at the bottom line at the end of the day it's there are lots of other bikes I'd prefer to ride around town from a pure design standpoint <laughs> and that's not really the fault of the bike all right lover's lane if you're a bold enough person to be a lover of Spurgeon Dunbar <laughs> you might find yourself on the back of this bike I suppose and um, and passenger accommodations are, are fine, I would say. They are 
uh, the seat's flat, so you're not gonna be able to see over your rider's shoulders as easily. And the seat's not quite as thick back there as is common with passenger accommodations, but uh, there's decent legroom. What else, what other information can I give you? It doesn't really matter. The 890 Rally R rider rides alone, I think. There's a lone wolf, a Spurgeon Dunbar of sorts. But yeah, if you wanna ride in the back, sure. There are pegs back there and the seat's pretty good. Okie dokie, dipping into the twisty road section of the daily rider route and can't say that this is really what this bike was made to do, right? This is the equivalent of riding a sport bike down a dirt road. <laughs> this bike doesn't have the tires for this. It doesn't have the, the I don't know, basic weight distribution for this. It doesn't have the chassis for it. I mean, it's not meant to do this ultimately at its best, but it's quite pleasant. Just like I always say about ADV bikes, people I think have this assumption you got a 21 inch front wheel. It's gonna be spindly and weird and not handle right. The worst thing about this bike on this section road right now is the tires. Aside from that, man, eat your heart out, any sport touring bike, basically, uh, within the bounds of reason. It's, it's a great place to be. It's fun. Don't think you can't do it, is all I'm saying. And you're probably not going to drag any foot pegs, what with the 97 inches of ground clearance or whatever. Now, the suspension on this bike is the main reason that Spurgeon Dunbar purchased this motorcycle and why he's so excited about it and why most people who would buy an 890 Rally would be excited about it because it's ultra high spec. Like I said, all the details are in the article that, that Spurgeon wrote. But I think uh, a sort of fringe benefit is just having real controlled damping circuits and you get a lot of feedback no matter what surface you're on. And I think it only benefits it in situations like this. Alrighty, everybody. Like on to surface streets here on the Spurgeon Dunbar special. What's next? What are we talking about next? Brakes, brakes. We talk about brakes. Nope. We got a green light. We'll wait for the next one. We always get the next red light. What? We got this green light too. When are we going to talk about brakes? Oh my goodness. All right. Well, let's hit our little uh, pavement jump here. <laughs> Here we go, here we go. <laughs> uh, terrific. I mean, this bike hit a jump four times that size at that speed and you're gonna be totally fine. The suspension, as I was just talking about, is very good. And the thing that it's really good at with those separate damping circuits is it means the top of the stroke, in my opinion, of the suspension stroke is really controlled. When you land off a jump, it starts doing a good job soaking up the bump early in the suspension travel and it means that the rest of it can be used as a manner of control for the rider. There's a difference between stiff suspension and harsh suspension and this is stiff but extremely well controlled and it's a real treat to hit jumps on. All right, this is part of the ride. We sometimes talk about the engine and I think this KTM engine is good. Now, as an owner of a now vintage, <laughs> just about KTM 75 degree V-twin with carburetors on it, I'm a fan of the KTM V-twin. I still just kind of like it better than the parallel twin. This is a great engine objectively. I think it sounds cool. I think it works well. I'm not actually totally convinced that it's the perfect fit for this bike. When I rode this bike off-road, I feel like it doesn't like to make power be used super low in the revs, which is kind of what I like to do when I ride off-road. Uh, and I think other engines are better at that, but it's awfully good. And it certainly doesn't leave you wanting for power. I just think it has a little bit of a road bias to the design and power delivery, in my opinion. It spins up quickly, it makes ripping power and it's fast and it feels rowdy off-road, but sometimes a little bit too rowdy. And there isn't a mode, for me anyway, that I could turn it down to that made it feel more like a tractor and less like a sports car, <laughs> if that makes sense. All right, a uh, red light. We finally talk about brakes and the brakes are great. I think just really, really good. <laughs> I didn't talk about the calipers or the rotor size or any of that stuff, but uh, they're steel braided lines. There's plenty of power. They're very responsive. It's great braking componentry. The only thing this bike can't do as far as stopping is have the right tires on it, which 
is Spurgeon Dunbar's fault and not mine. That being said, braking performance off-road I found quite good. I was very pleased to have that big chunky knobby tire when I rode it on uh, dirt roads and stuff. It was uh, quite good. Typical tire compromise there, you know? So overall, the 890, the KTM 890 Adventure R, specifically the Rally, a step in the right direction. I think the 890 engine is better than the 790 engine, not just because it grew by whatever it was, 80 cc's maybe? It went from 799 to 889, so it's 90 cc's. It didn't actually gain a whole lot more peak horsepower, but it broadened the power delivery in the middle of the rev range, and I think that was an advantage and a good step for this sort of midsize engine from KTM. As for the compromises, there are many. <laughs> we'll talk about that in just a second, but real quick, let's talk about the dash. We've got about 20 seconds to do that. Yeah, faux analog tack, uh, ride info on the left. I'm not crazy about this ride info. I think you can customize it, though I'm not sure. Uh, if you press set on this um, guy here, you can go into motorcycle and ride mode. You can choose uh, between your ride modes. We'll experiment with rally later on. You can turn off traction control and mess with some ABS settings. It is a pretty comprehensive system to get through to all the settings that you need and um, I've always liked this four button control panel that KTM does uh, with up down back and uh, select button I think it works pretty well so yeah uh, good good dash four stars I'd say as for the compromises the many compromises that this motorcycle makes it's designed to do something in particular and that's satisfy the off-road rage lust of people like Spurgeon Tunbar. And does it do that? Well, I would say we're about to find out. <laughs> Coming up in the off-road shortcut. On-road, it is not the ideal solution. It's tall, it's not as comfortable as other bikes in the class can be, especially for, for the road. But um, when it comes to raging down a dirt section, well, let's just, let's just see, shall we? Yeah! <laughs> All right, Tommy the Tank Engine has passed. We can uh, experiment with some 890 Rally off-road manners. Let's go into ride mode. Let's go to Rally. Uh, in Rally, you can choose a throttle response. I prefer off-road, uh, rally and street roll to narballs for me. Uh, now you can see the up-down buttons here create an option to, whoop, excuse me, I gotta go back to the main menu. Uh, you can adjust the trash control setting on the fly. Let's, uh, let's turn it all the way up to nine, just to start. Yeehaw. <laughs> <laughs> How slippery is this going to be, everybody? Woo! Woo -hoo -hoo. <laughs> yeah! We're raging through the dirt. A little bit too much TC, though. A little bit too much TC. Oh, can you guys see? Sorry, we got. Uh, did we get a little bit of uh, water on the uh, <clears throat> on the lens there? <laughs> Yeehaw! Woo! That was for you, Spurge. All right, let's turn it down a little bit to maybe, uh, I don't know, four, three. Wow. <laughs> ah, raging, raging. <laughs> let's do it again, everybody. That was fun. Rally! Spurgeon Dunbar Rally! The thing that I don't like most of all is doing U-turns. Because it's so dang tall. <laughs> Rah! <laughs> Check out the front ABS. Oh! Gnarly. So good. <laughs> Woo! I got my blood pumping, everybody. Uh, 
going to uh, pop the visor open. You still see? Yeehaw! Okay, that was fun. Uh, back to civilization, and so we'll click on uh, we'll click on rally, and then we'll click leave rally. Go back to street mode, which was uh, my favorite for the street. And we'll go in here and we'll shut off motorcycle traction control, I believe is what MTC stands for. Just in case it comes in handy. Woo! All right, can Sally the Rally do a wheelie? Probably. <laughs> Allie, yep. Yeah. <laughs> Dynamite. I'm sure Sally could do a much longer wheelie than that, but uh, we'll take it easy on Spartan Dunbar's tires and, uh, you know, society in general. All right, last test. Can we back it in? We got uh, <laughs> ABS in off-road mode, and you can definitely back it in. And I also have traction control off, so you can smear up them tires on the pavement even. One more try, everybody. <laughs> Dynamite. <laughs> You're such a hot rod, Sally. My goodness. <laughs> it's good fun. Sorry about the tires there, Spurge. I had to do it. It's testing, you see. All right, you turn challenge. We'll line up by this van here. We'll full lock to left feet up. Uh, uh. I kind of screwed it up. That was out uh, two parking spaces though, 2.1 I would say. Um, the uh, tires make it a little tricky. And that clutch engagement, which I struggle with a little bit. Maybe it's just me. Could be just me. Okie dokie, everybody. The Spurgeon Dunbar of motorcycles. There you have it. The Sally's all splattered in mud. Looking appropriate. My pants are wet. <laughs> um, quite a machine though, right? I mean, that is a rip-roaring motorcycle, is it not? <laughs> Oof. All right, everybody. <clears throat> Sally's getting all steamed up. But before I go inside to cool off, let's answer some Instagram questions, shall we? First up, we got a question from 4E6, who asks, do you really need big ADVs such as the R1250GS, 1290 Adventure, etc., and the rest, or is this enough to conquer the world? I believe the lighter weight should tip the scales in its favor massively. Yeah, I mean, look, it's not as good a touring bike as a 1250GS or a KTM uh, 1290 Adventure or something like that. Because the big engine and the sort of like really, really extra broad power, I think helps something like that. But yeah, I mean, like if you wanna conquer the world, like do you need more horsepower than this? Do you need more than what this gives you? No, not really. I mean, more gas maybe, but like whatever, there's solutions to that. As far as like, is it enough motorcycle to do anything you wanna do? Yeah, definitely. Next question is from Gromanson, who says, flipping things around a bit. What is the ultimate daily ride for this beast? Clearly, it's somewhere with a little pavement. Yes. So one of my test rides that I often do with adventure bikes is to ride uh, away from Long Beach, California and toward Santiago Peak, it's called. Uh, I think it's about 30 miles of pavement, mostly highway. And then it goes, it turns into truck trail. And then like, you know, there's some single track stuff you can do. There's a bunch of sort of off-roading that you can do. I think if you were going to commute from the, <laughs> I don't know, sort of like greater Los Angeles area to the top of a mountain, that would be, that's the ultimate commute for this bike because it's big enough and comfortable enough to be good on the highway. It's better than a 690 or, you know, 701 Husky or something like that, like a big single cylinder Enduro. I think it's just more comfortable and uh, more at ease on the open road at 80 miles an hour, but it's darn good as a dirt bike. I mean, you can slam it into some things and boost off jumps and really not be intimidated by almost any off-road terrain you come to, provided you don't need to stop and put your foot down because that'll be a little bit scary, even 
if you're tall. <laughs> Next question is from Matt Gervais 92, who says, for those of us who are not ready to race, that's KTM's slogan, is the KTM price worth it compared to cheaper Japanese offerings? So I think this is a pretty loose way of saying, what about a Tenere 700, right? Or something like that, whatever. And uh, no, I don't think the price is worth it for people that are not quote unquote ready to race. You want a 21 inch front wheel, you want some dirt looks, you want some dirt capability, but you don't need ultra high spec suspension. You don't need more horsepower th uh, than, you know, 60 or 70. And you don't need all those levels of traction control and all the stuff that this bike offers, then you don't need this bike. <laughs> and I think the Tenere 700 is an example of a category of bike that offers less ultimate capability, but still the same kind of mantra. And yeah, if that's what you're after, then bikes like that I think would serve you quite well. Not everybody is Spurgeon Dunbar after all. Next question is from Venkat Anish, who says, is it a better all-rounder than the Ducati Desert X? A Desert X is a bike I haven't talked about really up to this point, or the Touareg 660, although I think Touareg 660 falls into that category of 10700 that I just talked about, even though it's not Japanese. Desert X, is it a better all-rounder than Desert X? For me, I don't think so. I think it's more capable as a dirt bike, but I was really impressed with the Desert X's street manners. I think the Desert X is... Not as tall, but it feels as big, if not bigger, uh, which suits me because I'm tall and an experienced rider. So I didn't mind that. For me and my lifestyle, like what the stuff that I like to do off road, the kind of adventure riding I like to do, I wouldn't ball quite this hard. And I think the Desert X is a better compromise for someone like me. But I do think that this is the pinnacle of off road ADV performance th that I've experienced. And there's something to be said for that, <laughs> for sure. All right, last question is from Midcoast Scrambler, who says, if this bike were a musical genre, which would it be? Well, I uh, went ahead and asked one Spurgeon Dunbar what he thought of that question. I wanted him to answer it because it's his bike. And his answer was decidedly simple. He just said, rock and roll, baby, loud and raucous, <laughs> which is maybe not as uh, deep a dive as you were looking for. But yeah, that's certainly, that's the upshot here. This thing is... It wants to be ridden hard and slammed into things and jumped off of things and it wants a torture test and it's up for it as far as I can tell. Okay everybody, uh, that's it for Instagram questions. Stick around with me, we'll put this sucker on the Daily Rider leaderboard. Hang on a second. All right everybody, here we are inside Revzilla West at the Daily Rider leaderboard uh, and we've got the Spurgeon spec. KTM 890 Adventure R Rally, ready to go. I did make a little note here um, that it's a, it's a 21 model, because, which isn't hugely important, but um, it's a late model bike. I think it belongs on the main Daily Rider leaderboard, uh, but uh, because it's the 23 board, I figured I'd make a little note. It also has a, a dollar sign here, you'll see. Obviously, it's a, it's a, it's a pricey machine there. Um, and 20 grand is usually about the cutoff, and it's a high spec machine. I think it deserves the, it, it's earned the dollar sign, I think, in more ways than one. Uh, not least of which capability, which we um, sort of talked about there. So, where do you think it goes on the Daily Rider leaderboard? Uh, it's not as good as these bikes on, on a daily ride. I know my daily rides across Los Angeles, and maybe you're thinking, like, well, I have to commute from Idaho to Canada every day, and it's only dirt roads, and if that's the case, then maybe that's the bike for you. But, in general, this program leans toward um, a more sort of stereotypical or, um, I don't know, <laughs> normal, I guess, for lack of a better word, commute. And uh, these, bikes are, these bikes are better. Ninja 400, better. Sorry, Spurge. It's actually very similar to the Honda CBR1000 Triple R SP, in so much as both bikes are very uncompromising, right? They're, they're aimed at a specific thing, like a, a CBR1000 Triple R is supposed to go out a racetrack as fast as possible. And when you ride it on the street, you're like, yep, I'm not very comfortable. And it's, the engine's not necessarily particularly easy to use on the street, that kind of thing. I don't think Spurge's KTM here um, suffers quite as much as the CBR does from a comfort perspective, um, but it is an immensely tall seat. Um, and you know, when it's all tricked out to go in the dirt with knobby tires and stuff like that, it's a, it, it's a, it takes some, some, some cautionary riding that other bikes do not. Um, so I think it's very similar to this bike. I do think it's better than a triple RSP. The question is, is it better than a Suzuki Hayabusa to get to work? <laughs> sort of an absurd question, right? It is a little more comfortable for tall folks, such as myself anyway, um, if you think I'm tall, uh, or if you qualify me as a tall person. But is it, you know, the Hayabusa is heavy and, you know, like a pain to push out of the garage. 
and around the, so does it go under the Hayabusa, above the Hayabusa? Uh, what bike would I be more apt to take? The Spurgeon Spec 890R Rally. Uh, I, I, I think I'm, go I'm going Hayabusa. I'm going, I'm going down here. It's going to go between the um, CBR 1000 Triple R and uh, the Hayabusa, which I think might seem like a strange place for um, the bike, but I think it's actually, it's actually fitting. <laughs> it's ultimately not a great daily ride or foremost daily rides, though it is a very impressive and, uh, and, and, and great bike in certain circumstances. So there you have it. Um, where did it stack up against other ADVs? Maybe we could look at the old uh, leaderboards here. It's sort of not as good as some of the things that are on here just because these are more road biased. I mean, even Tenere 700, KLR 650, V-Strom 1050 XT. Those are adventure bikes that are much more road oriented and are, you know, would sort of finish better on a typical daily ride. So not a great finish maybe for this bike, but we talked about what it's good at. That's clear, right? You understand what it's good at? It's very, very good at that and Spurgeon bought it for that reason. Many people who would either buy an 890 Rally or spec their 890 Adventure R to Rally spec will be looking for that performance and what you'll get will be stupendous. Anyway, there you have it. Thanks so much for hanging out, everybody. Truly appreciate it. And um, we'll see you next time on Daily Rider. Fixed it. Hey there, Daily Riders. I wanted to remind you that the way that we pay for all this video content here at Revzilla is from the company coffers, basically. It's easy to assume that we make a gajillion zillion dollars on YouTube, but we don't really. We try to keep ads out of your face whenever possible. The way we make money is selling uh, apparel, accessories, and equipment to motorcycle enthusiasts and adventure enthusiasts. So. The next time you need a helmet, jacket, gloves, boots, pants, saddlebags, tires, whatever the heck it is for your next outing or adventure, just uh, consider Revzilla. Because when you do that, uh, you essentially support all the programming uh, that you enjoy on this channel. So yeah, that's uh, all I got to say this time around. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. Mm -hmm.